Okay guys, this is going to be a quick video of whatever, a few minutes to do a little EQ on the Vic DV62SIs because out of the box, they don't really measure the best. They're alright, I mean, most speakers in this price range don't usually measure very well, but I'm just going to show that it can be EQ'd out a little bit. Granted, you're going to need a calibrated microphone, which most people don't have. That's why I don't usually do these videos because... Mm, they, I don't know. I guess it could be interesting, but uh, most people don't have the ability or the patience or whatever to go through and EQ their speakers out and everything. Most people are just probably going to listen to them the way they are out of the box. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make it more affordable so more people can do this sort of thing. Because um, the software in front of you, Roo, is free. What, uh, what costs is the microphone, but we'll see maybe in a future video. But anyway... I took a minute and ran uh, a test with um, my microphone. I have the uh, Dayton, I always forget what it's called. I think it's the Omni Mic V2 there. Uh, then I got the Bix right next to the Sony CS5s and uh, placed the microphone where I typically listen and did a couple sweeps. And this is the Bix stock response in my room. Now, in the other video, when I had placed it a foot from the speaker, it's going to be much different because uh, when you're only one foot from the speaker, it's not going to pick up a lot of the room reflections and stuff. But uh, back where I sit, it's actually a little worse. Um, even though my room is pretty well damped, much better than an average room. And it's a basement, so with a, you know, I got concrete walls and floor. And... But it is what it is. That's what it, it measured from my listening position. What I do is there's another free program called Equalizer APO or EQ APO. I put a link to it in the other description of the other video. But in here you can uh, uh, have a pre-amplification uh, gain adjustment um, here and you can turn them on and off with this. Um, each one of these is like a, a module or whatever. Uh, and then here you have your graphic EQ, which you can do up to a 15-band, uh, 31-band, or a variable. I typically just use the 31-band because um, even all these numbers down here, these points, you can you can just click over here and uh, double-click them and change them to whatever you want. So if you want this one to be 550, you can just double-click it, change it to 550. Uh, these are just preset um, bands, whatever. And then like these, you can just click on them and you can drag them up and down with the mouse or you can use your up and down arrows on your keyboard to move them one dB at a time. As you'll see over here when you click on it, it lights up. Uh, this is the 80 hertz. I have it at negative 3 dB. And basically what I did is I uh, took my measurement in Roo here and you can see all the ups and downs. And anywhere there's a peak, you know, I pull it down, you know, like right here at 40 to 50 hertz, there's a bit of a peak. You know, I uh, go back to EQ APO and knock that down a little bit. And then uh, here at 60, you know, there's a, a dip. You go in and right around 60 hertz in the EQ, bump that up. And just keep working your way down the line. Like right here, right before 200 hertz, there's a, another dip. Um, go in and push that up and then... After going through and, you know, uh, adjusting the EQ for all the peaks and valleys, trying to flatten it out, um, this is where I landed, which I got rid of a lot of it. The main difference was these Bix, at least in my listening position in my room, have a, have a pretty good hump kind of here um, in the mid-range, um, almost in the mid-bass, starting in the mid-bass up through the mid-range. And then another bit of a peak here in the 5.6, almost into 7K. And then it really, for how bright these speakers are, um, you would assume this curve would just go right up, especially in high frequencies, and it, it doesn't um, at all. Um, it really tapers down up into higher frequencies, but usually doesn't matter. Most people can't really hear. I mean, if you got really good hearing, you can still maybe hear to 20, but most people are going to be down around probably 15, 16, maybe 17. So most of this up here is not as big a deal. You're not going to really notice it as much. This band right here, you're going to notice the most because this is this is mid ranges where human hearing is probably the most sensitive. Um, probably actually up into four or five k really, but 
this comes down right here because this is where the crossover is. But uh, tinkering, I was able to bring that up a little bit, and then that that mid range hump, uh, you know, we'll just call them squigglies. Still, you can't. Some speakers you cannot get rid of those. As you adjust things, this bump will come down, and another one will pop up over here. Uh, whatever you know, you just make do the best you can, and you know, I got rid of that hump. Try to get this all at least on the same you know, plain, get it as flat as I could. Um, this 60 hertz dip-ish right here, um, I couldn't couldn't get rid of it. I got like the 40 hertz, there's a bump here around 40 to 50. Um, must just be something about my room, because I have, um, which I do with most of my speakers, I usually do this in the mini DSP uh, EQ, but mm, probably nobody or very few of you uh, using these speakers or uh, listening to this has a mini DSP uh, to adjust it in there. But uh, 20, 25 hertz, these speakers can't reproduce those frequencies at all, not even close. Most music's probably not going to have it, but if you listen to movies or some synthesized music, it, it could have it. But either way, these speakers can't reproduce that low, so might as well just completely cut those frequencies off. And you can see the curve here. When I cut those off, here's 20. Just pull those all the way down to... Uh, um, negative 99 db on the first two then at 31 i couldn't go down that low because it really started to pull this curve down and um, i was actually losing some into the 40s and these speakers can reach down into the 40s a little bit so i only did negative 10 at uh the 31 and a half hertz um, but even then the 40 hertz right here i still have that i have that down 2 db I could honestly probably move it down probably, you know, uh, three or four because we'll drop it down another dB to three because in Rue, I'm still getting this hump here about at right at peaks at about 45 hertz. So, I mean, and I could fine tune this. Uh, you, I mean, if you want to, you have this stuff. You know, I'm sure you, if you do it, you already do this. Um, but you can go, like I said, you can change those frequencies in EQ APO these i could change this to 45 hertz if i wanted to or uh, i believe even in the variable you can uh adjust more stuff but uh oops and possibly pull this hump down this at 63 65 into 70 i tried pulling that up by 10 db because it, it was way down here even with a plus 10 db it still only came up to there and it's one of those things like if i go way up trying to pull this up and it it tends to change things down here because you're causing the speaker to behave different or differently. So sometimes you just kind of try to get it as flat as you can and just be happy. Uh, I tried the automated where I let Rue do it through uh, um, through the automated deal. I can't remember what it's called, but it, basically you can have Rue do it and then import the file into EQ APO and let it work it out. And um, It worked, but it didn't do nearly as good a job and it seemed more time consuming than just getting my overall response and then going into EQ APO and just adjusting each one of these levels, make a couple adjustments, run a measurement, make a couple adjustments, run a measurement. And I think, I don't know, after about 15 or 20 minutes, you know, I had this and um, it's noticeable when, which that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna, I'm gonna sit down, we're gonna set the mic up about where I listen and I'll be able to, and here in the equalizer APO, you can just click this on and off as you listen. When the power button is white over here, it's on. When it's black, it's off. And you can sit in your listening spot and just flip this on and off and listen for the differences. With these, some songs you don't really notice it as much. Just, you know, could be just because of the song. And then other songs, it's very noticeable when you turn it on and off. Um, I typically don't use the preamplification. I just leave it set at zero because, uh, again, I can control all that through mini DSP if I want. Rue, a microphone, a calibrated mic. Uh, I don't remember what this Dayton Audio one costs. A USB calibrated mic, so you can plug it in your computer. Um, EQ, equalizer APO, and Rue. And you should be able to start, you know, doing some uh, correction and... Sometimes you can, I've had speakers that measure terribly and it's sometimes it's because of the speakers not designed well, a cheap speaker. And sometimes it, my listening area isn't huge and I have an open wall over that way. 
is an open wall. And some speakers, I don't know, they just don't sound very good in this space. And um, I can go through this and kind of tweak them and get them to actually sound pretty decent with something like this. So this is kind of going to be the, I think this is kind of going to be the future of audio where a lot of this kind of stuff is going to be much more integrated into one system, possibly on your phone um, or something, or built into an amplifier or preamplifier that you can plug into a screen or your phone and mess with all these things. Uh, you know, the EQ, parametric EQ, everything will just be built right into the amplifier. Or the amplifier, like some of the home theater systems, it'll, it'll have its own microphone and calibration uh, software, and it will just kind of do it on its own. You set it down, plug it in, set the microphone, hook it up. It does a couple couple runs, figures it out, evens everything out, and you're good to go. Uh, DSP, I think, is going to be a really big part of the future, audio in the future. So anyway, oh, and then this is, uh, I don't have the one-foot measurement stock it was much rougher than this it was a lot more like this um, but this is with the microphone measuring at one foot away this is i was able to get it flattened out that much which again was much flatter than uh having rue do it um but this doesn't necessarily matter because you don't listen to your speakers from one foot away you got to measure from where you listen so anyway let's bring this back up and we'll get everything repositioned and have a listen Okay, I'm just going to play a copyright-free rock track that I use a lot. I got, I put, uh, also I moved the speakers out a little bit further from the wall, and it did actually help in the measurements. Um, I was getting a, uh, uh, I pulled them out about another, oh, probably about four or five inches from the wall. Uh, I was getting a, oh, what was it, a real weird uh, bass bump, I think around two or three hundred hertz or something. Don't know. I got, those are, uh, uh, black Harbor Freight um, moving blankets. They're like four or five bucks at Harbor Freight, and they have the you know padding in them or whatever. Um, they're cheap and they're black, so they don't look too bad. And I got two on each side, so there's two of them. So I have a little bit more thickness, and that did help quite a bit. But yeah, for some reason I don't know, uh, moving them out away from the wall, and uh, it's probably because they're rear ported. I don't know. And uh, but anyway, getting them out away from the wall a little bit did help in the lower base. Uh, area so whatever but we'll play this and uh, as I uh, go through I'll be oops we want equalizer APO I'll be turning this on and off I don't know if you guys can tell but when it's black it's off when it's white it's on we're gonna start with it on so here we go That's off. I'll turn it back on now. All right, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn it back on. Turned off. All right, I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to turn it off. Back on. Well, never mind. All right. Let's stop this. All right. Uh, if you're just listening to this on, like, some laptop speakers or just some cheap computer speakers, you're probably not going to hear a difference. Uh, obviously, you're going to probably want to use headphones. But for me, 
very noticeable and it's definitely uh for me i can hear this this whole hump right here is being pulled down because up to this point the they're crossed over right around uh 3000 on and the woofer's on a first order so the woofer is probably going to carry on a little bit past this um because it's not you know the first order is not going to be a very steep slope but this whole hump right here is being done by the six and a half inch woofer and it seems to my ears having this hump here is kind of drowning out the low end it it is kind of yeah you know you don't notice the low the the low base as much like getting rid of this bringing this down it actually makes the all well, that and cutting out those super low frequencies even though a lot of these songs don't have those frequencies in them anyway but any of that low frequency information that the speakers can't reproduce it, it, it helps to get rid of it it makes less work for the woofer to do but yeah bringing this hump down um and fixing this a little bit makes the low end better i listened to again some primus and some rage against machine and i don't know a couple bands that have a you know bass guitar and stuff and it did seem to kind of clean up the bass a little bit maybe make it a little bit more you know a little tighter a little more uh, realistic i guess whatever you want to say um but yeah just it makes it a much better speaker uh by smoothing this out um and some of that harshness too that these speakers get right in here that that the, i think the brightness of these tweeters you're not hearing it up here because like i said most people can't hear up here i can't i can't really hear past 16 or 17 so this hump right here i'm not really hearing it uh that brightness i think i'm noticing with the tweeters this hump right here and uh getting rid of that hump flattening this out um makes the upper treble uh, it's it's still quite bright and airy but it's a little more tolerable yeah, um, I'll look it up. I'll put it in the description what like a, a calibrated like mic like that costs because it, you don't you just need the mic. They give you a configuration file. The Roo software that we're looking at here is free. Uh, it's not terribly hard to use for basic stuff like this. There's this software can do a ton of things, um, but I just don't have the time to sit and learn all this stuff constantly. I have so much other stuff to do, so I just use it really at a basic level. And then this program, uh, it. I haven't had much issues with it. it. It does have a few little quirks here and there, um, but for just doing like using EQ in it, it's pretty easy. And up here, you got your device uh, drop down, so you're gonna want to select uh, whatever uh, audio device your Windows is using. In mine, it says Mini DSP right there, two i four. So just select that, and you can set your thing, and you can turn your EQ on and off. And I think there's even other modules. I'm not going to get it in deep in this program. You, you get it. You can start messing with it and look into it. it this program, for a, another free program, you can do a lot with it as well. These are what I do. Some Not to all my speakers, but to some of my speakers, if I just feel like they sound weird or I'm not getting uh, what they want or what I want out of them or if they measure bad, I'll uh, hook this up real quick and take a measurement and mess around with the equalizer, try to get them flattened out. And then, I mean, even when you're done in the EQ APO, you, you can, uh, down here, you can export the file. You click that and you can save it and you know, then it's saved. And then when I hook up another speaker and tune it, and then, you know, I could go through a whole bunch of other speakers and six months from now, I could hook these speakers back up and I want to use the, the, uh, I don't even need Roo open anymore. I got my measurement. Only thing that's got to be open is this. Um, this does have to be open if you want it to, work um but yeah i could open put those speakers back up there six months from now open this up select open go select the file i saved open it and it'll reapply this eq and as i go through i can eq all my speakers and just save it and you know pretty cool anyway if you have any questions put them down below i'll try to help you as much as i can i am not a professional i'm just a guy from audio or from audio a guy from iowa that uh, likes music and audio and tinkering around with the stuff. So, uh, yeah, hope you learned something from this. Or if you know if I, if I miss something, politely put it in the comments. And uh, yeah, we all learned something today. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. We'll see you later.